Right, the power file we've all been craving for. I've all been, I've, everyone in the world has been wanting to know what, what went on in Amstel Gold Race on Sunday. How did Matteo Van Der Poel win? What power was he doing? Etc. Etc. So 260k race, six and a half hours. That's a long day in the saddle for anyone, let alone if you're racing. Uh, 337 weighted average power. Um, that's pretty significant. Burnt 4,257 calories, so that's that's a lot. Um, his total work for the day, so that's based on heart rate, but his total work is 6,000 joules, 6,400 kilojoules, which is a lot of work um, to get through. Max heart rate 197, um, max power 1,400 watts, fair. Uh, so yeah, it was, it was a tough day out in the saddle for sure. 260k, 3,500 meters of climbing. Um, so if you look at the race generally, it's super, super hilly. Um, the whole day, it's really, you know, just there's no flat at all. Um, so the first like couple hundred K, it's probably about 300 normalized, you know, like there's accelerations for sure, you can see on each of the climbs, um, they're sort of climbing relatively hard, you know, like sort of 400 watts-ish, um, if we try and find some of them. Uh, the segments here are really bad, like they're not sort of very well defined, um, but yeah, on this one here, you know, like 360 watts for seven minutes for him, that's a little over um, sort of five and a half watts per kilo, so, so you know, nothing, nothing crazy at all. Um, and you know, it's just the constant wearing though. I mean, you keep looking at his heart rate, it has these little peaks and little troughs. Um, and you see th another 360 watts for five, six minutes. I mean, it's it's all adding up, it's all gonna hurt. Um, and then the, the pace really starts to increase towards the end, 400 watts almost uh, for four minutes. Uh, but yeah, so Matthew Van Der Poel decided to attack uh, with a long way to go. Um, he had decided to attack on, I'm not gonna be able to pronounce this, uh, the Kuitenberg, I believe it was called. Um, and he did a big attack, and th that was when he averaged his best 10 minute power. Um, so you can see his sort of 9 minute 20 power, 447 watts, um, which is when he attacked. So he hit 1300 watts, attacked 60 k's an hour, and then just kept going up this climb. Uh, and so, yeah, that was that was when he attacked. It was, yeah, sorry, 40 k out. It wasn't the Konoiteberg. Um, it was slightly earlier. Uh, and yeah, 447 watts for 9 minutes is, is very, very solid power, just generally, let alone in a race. I'd say his 20 minute power is probably more like 460, I'd say, 450, so around that would be my prediction. Um, in terms of the watts per kilo for that, again, 6, I reckon he weighs a little less than this, in my opinion. Um, but still, it's, it's not mega watts per kilo, but I'd say I'd say he does weigh a little less than that. But still, it's, it's pretty impressive to do 6 watts per kilo for 9 minutes and then uh, sort of 200k into a race. Uh, but what's really interesting is more what happens in the last sort of hour of the race. Uh, so again, for an hour, he averaged 340 watts. So that's that's just plain average. Normalized would be closer to 370. Uh, and we'll, we can, get, again, look at sort of the heart rate, um, which is always, it's always useful just to look where the heart rate efforts are. Um, you can see, again, 430 watts. So of the Kanoiteberg, he was really going for it, 430 watts. Um, and on these 4% climbs, it's really more about watts than watts per kilo uh, to a certain degree. Uh, and again, on another, I don't know, one of the another the, one of these climbs, which I believe was the Gulen Wemmerberg, 430 watts. Of the Bemmelberg, he was going hard, um, but the bit where he was really impressive was um, this last part here, where it was basically him just going full to the running, um, and you'll be able to see the power he did. He did 425 watts for 11 minutes 40, which is quite frankly ridiculous. Like at the end of a race doing 430 watts with huge surges and hitting a peak of 1400 watts in the sprint is just that is where it was unbelievable um it really was like he's a train he he was sort of going you know uh, so along the flat um sort of going 50 60 k's an hour and then you can see this is the sprint when he opens it up uh but the time he took back if we look at Kwiatkowski so bear in mind for the last 11 minutes 30 he averaged 430 watts and did 43 kilometers an hour. We now have Kwiatkowski. Kwiatkowski doesn't post power because he's from Strava, and, uh, he's from Sky, sorry, not Strava, um, and he's therefore not allowed to post. Um, but we'll go back to this um, just a little bit. Uh, keep going a little bit more. There we go, about 13 minutes, or we can do. So for the last 12 minutes, he averaged 39 kilometers an hour. So potentially, I did make a video earlier saying that the time gaps weren't correct, but maybe it was. Um, so this is the estimated power, but what you can see is that um, Van der Poel was absolutely flying, 43 kilometers an hour, and he was just drilling it, um, just really, really going for it. This last climb here, so 450 watts for three minutes, really just, like this is the bit, you know when they turned onto that corner and they had that shot of Van der Poel, like a train just flying past, that was where it was. They then turned onto the long straight, um, so we can see this long straight part here was basically when they turned on. 
Now, he just started this sprint really early. So you'll see around this corner, he sort of surges, soft pedals a bit, and then he's like, sees them. And I think maybe he gives, may, no, he's still in the front this whole time. I'm not really sure why he starts soft pedaling here, but maybe, maybe someone did come around. And then it's that last bit. So for the last two minutes of the race, he held five, almost 500 watts, which to be honest, I can hold 490 watts fresh on a good day. And I'm like, yeah, that's pretty decent. To hold 490 watts at the end of a 260 kilometer race after just holding like 400 watts for 10 minutes and another 400 watts for 10 minutes, the, the level of, that they have is just quite frankly ridiculous. Like most people can't do 490 watts for two minutes like ever, but like the way they can just do it at the end of a race is quite frankly unbelievable. Um, and then the sprint is just different level. 788 watts for 48 seconds, average speed 59 kilometers an hour. And he just sort of rode consistently at 700 watts here and then opened up a sprint and hit 1400 watts. Like, so before his sprint even started, he averaged 660 watts for 25 seconds. And that's after his big, you know, 450 watt turn that he did before. And then he does, you know, a thousand watts, a thousand eleven hundred watts for 12 seconds, 17 seconds and um, peak of 1400 watts. And like, th that is again, just nuts. So basically what you can gather from this power file is that Matthew Vanderpool is unbelievably strong. I mean, three, four, that's almost 360 normalized, I'd say, 350, 360 normalized for six and a half hours. And at the end of that, you need 1400 watts. I just, like, it's just mind boggling. Um, so yeah, that, that is how strong this guy is. He's, he is a different level um, to anyone else. Uh, and it doesn't really, it, it's hard to show, like, without just saying the same things over and over again, how amazed I am by this, but, like, it, it's probably one of the best power fires I've ever seen in my life, like, this is, this is crazy, crazy, crazy power, um, 12 minutes, 4.30 watts, it's like, at the end of a race, surges and all that stuff, ah, it's nuts, and then to top it off the sprint as well, it really was a different race. So yeah, Matteo Vanderpol for sure. He's going to be one to watch out for in almost any race. Maybe he probably can't win the tour, I'd say, just because it's a bit hilly. Any other race, I mean, you, you'd probably have him, wouldn't you? I mean, Lombardi, probably get round. Um, Liège, get round. San Remo, definitely. San Remo literally suits him so well. Same with uh, the Cobbles. I mean, Flan, as we already saw, he's unbelievable. But Roubaix, let's be honest, he'll be there as well because he's, he's good on the, on the Cobbles. Due to his cyclocross background, I mean... Sprint stages, he, he'll be up there, won't he? I mean, it's not, it's not to be sniffed at his power. Um, at the end of a, at the end of a race, I mean, fourteen hundred watts. I mean, like, Cap says he does 600, 1,600 watts in the sprint. So I mean, like you know, that's just a normal sprint stage. So he could be up there in bunch of sprints as well. As we saw, as he won the Dutch national cha um, championship title, TTs. I mean, he'll be there or thereabouts. I mean, I, I feel like he is sort of a very similar rider to Sagan in the fact that he can do anything. But I'd say he's more varied than Sagan because he's a lot lighter than Sagan. He's more, he's closer to you know um, seventy kilos than Sagan's up. Says he's more like eighty kilos. So, you know, Sagan can climb well, but Vanderpol can climb even better because Sagan was well spat by the time he was spat like hundred and eighty k to go or something. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy. It. I'll link the power file below but take a look at it because it is nuts anyway cheers for watching and i'll see you in the next video